Broom is my home. Born and bred. Um, yeah, all my family come from here, both mum and dad's sides. So, spend all my life in Broom, apart from the time I went away to do the musical theatre course for the year. But other than that, Broom is my home. Anybody want a bit of tempura? Warm up a bit? Yes, please. Yes. I'm coming from originally Japan. Uh, near Osaka. I was born there and um, grown up that area and moved to Tokyo and come to Australia in 1993. Some reason, probably in this broom mobs, <laughs> they are quite uh, Asian connected people. So I found it a very similar feeling and a very easy to communicate, very f um, friendly and a very um, always kind of group oriented, good, good group oriented feeling, which is very much Asian way of living. Grew up in um, Esperance. On my father's side is actually from um, you know, the Great Victorian Desert and a bit of the Nullarbor. So, in actual fact, um, I don't know what Yada, which is like, yeah, the almost central desert. But it's amazing just learning. I'm just still learning about who I am, but um, originally, well, I, yeah, might as well say I grew up most of my life in, in Esperance, so it's a beautiful, fresh little beach town, a lot of Norfolk pine, um, a lot of good memories. <laughs> As a team, we quickly learnt that you, you know, that thing of um, not being able to tell one story. You can't tell a black and white story here. So when we talk about going around to elders, we're talking about Japanese elders, Malay elders, Aboriginal Yaru elders, um, Garajadi elders, uh, different people from that make up the Broom community. Um, because you couldn't, you couldn't make a show about Broom and not. Um, respect all those places, people that make up this community and have made it up for so such a long time. Yeah, That's my sister-in-law, Susie. Oh, okay, hello. This is our little block, see? From last year. Beautiful, wow. It's all the yeah. reef, you got everything on the reef. Mm. We're yeah. so lucky. Sit <laughs> up. Beautiful. Oh, I don't need to sit down. That's right, you sit up. Oh. That's right, Daddy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. The way that we kn knew to work was to go to the old people, talk to them about what stories they wanted to tell and make a show. And when we came to Broome, it's not, there's not one story to tell in Broome. It's so multifaceted. people of the community well I hope that they can see hope that there you know there are young people that will continue in their footsteps to keep this place a strong place so that it doesn't get drowned by everything around it um, development wise and all of that because it's quite easy once there's you know a lot of um, people from other places you know that's going to influence this place even more and already it feels like we've lost a lot of the, you know, the real broom feeling.
Yo. So then, what was it like growing up in Broome in your day? Well, we had the town almost to ourselves. So imagine, we had those, the beautiful coastline. We went, we were on the beach every day. There wasn't a day that we weren't on the beach, either fishing, reefing, we used to call it then, at the low tides, or shelling, <laughs> looking for cockles, Total. or crabbing, Total. swimming, of course, and as the tide would be full, we'd be in the water swimming. And then by the time we'd go home in the evenings, we were that tired. You know, we'd be asleep before tea time sometimes. Yeah. Dahlia, yeah. that is mine. Which one is your, the it's rock like cut? This. That's your one there. That's this yours? One? No. Yeah. yeah. It's not nice. Ah. Rock cut. Yeah. Ah, yeah. It's nice. Going around talking to a lot of the old people, um, again and again, they would come back and say one of the most important issues they felt was facing facing Broome was young people learning to respect themselves and respect their culture and respect their elders, but first place respect themselves. And in a way, I think that actually became the essence of what we wanted to make a piece about. Poor bother me, mixed breed me. I'm a brother and stranger on the streets. I'm a mongrel, sensing the sin of black flowers when I walk in the darkness. As far as young people in Broome today, um, I can only uh, compare it to my, my life as a young person in Broome as well. So when I see young people today in Broome, I, I feel a sense of loss for them. They, look a bit lost, whether it's through wearing Americanized clothes and or, you know, singing Americanized songs or playing video games or whatever they do now. It feels so like it feels like miles away from where I was as a kid growing up in Broome and it's not that far away. So it's a little bit I feel like they've lost something. They might not feel that way, they might feel quite, you know, normal and happy but when I look at them, I feel like they've missed out on a lot, and I hope our project um, shows them maybe just a little reflection of themselves and hopefully give them a chance to maybe think about it, think about, you know, um, that there are different ways to express yourself or, you know, they, yeah, somehow they can connect with what, what we do. You got two dollars, can't help a brother get by It's for the phone, not a drink, bro, I'm telling a lie You need to be rude, fella, shut your mouth They get my cousins down here and we can go right now You wanna skip fair, brother, what you looking at, Nate? You think it's up there, stand up, I got nothing to say You probably scared now, Dad I got family coming down in the rowdy packs again, get back Contemporary Indigenous dance is mixing what comes from you with what you know and what you remember and what you um, have learnt along your way. Um, and being an Indigenous performer, obviously it's coming from you, so it, to me I feel like that's contemporary Indigenous dance, what's coming from you and your influences, whether it be straight traditional dance or whether you've um, done more than one different type of indigenous dance from different areas or whether you've um, you know learnt gymnastics and all the different things and then to come up with something from yourself to express something through all those movements I think that's where it is at the moment in my head. <laughs> this is some of the pieces we did last year in um, December uh, some traditional stuff mixed with um, uh, type of modern moves. 
And we're all different ethnic groups too, we're all different tribes people here. We're throwing a lot of this together and um, making it um, something new, I suppose. Just got to recap, revisit some of the moves that we're going to be doing and um, see if we can come up with different from other movements. But at the point now, I'm just going to get down this whole skeleton first, and then later on, we'll probably add new, new, um, new phrases to this whole dance piece. It's called memory of tradition. So, you know, there's a there's a certain memory we do of the certain the movements. Um, it's changed into something more contemporary. It's really, really dangerous. I thought it may, maybe at first it could. Oh, I had to be careful myself too, you know, to find some of the things I can play with, and not sort of, you know, give something out there. Where, say, for instance, one of my countrymen might come and see me doing this one type of move. They go, ah, that's a move that you can't do, I suppose, and you know, get in trouble and all that. But oh, I want to keep it close to where it's everybody's. Um, mm -hmm. um, you know, doing the right thing, I suppose. You know, 15 years in the industry, it's become, um, I don't know, more challenging, more challenging. The more style and dance I'm starting to learn, and especially with myself, so it's actually learning more what I can push my body towards and um, come up with something new every time I do a, a new project. With Serge and his background, uh, him giving us a style in Af African and also um, placing, I guess, basic steps with him and actually forming it into something more modern, it challenges people to go further than what they know of in their own culture. Cool. Yes. This one is okay. I mean, we all come from different uh, customs and protocol, but it's amazing that we can step a little bit further towards something, um, I suppose, new. I mean, people go, oh, there's a flavour of that, there's a flavour of this. Wow, now it's put together, it's a flavour of everything. It's made this beautiful mix and it's a new piece. Cold? Yeah, it's good. Et donc, ici, l'histoire de la danse, des danses, euh, des danses indigènes ici et puis l'histoire des danses africaines, c'est vraiment complètement différent. C'est vraiment, c'est même opposé. Parce qu'en en Afrique, de, en Afrique la, la communauté est restée ensemble, elle est très forte, les danses sont très fortes et elles, se sont évo elles évoluent lentement et ensemble avec un, un rythme continu. Et, Et donc actuellement il n'y a aucun problème à prendre telle ou telle danse à la maison.